Greetings, my beautiful people. Welcome or welcome back to Earth's Medicine, where we explore the healing wonders of Mother Earth with a Jamaican flavor. If you're new to the channel, my name is Monique, and on here we strive to educate people like you on the health benefits and the medicinal uses of plants that grow in Jamaica and in other parts of the world. So consider subscribing. I mean, it's totally free and turn on your post notifications so you'll be alerted whenever we upload a new video. So the world of traditional medicine is rich with plants that possess remarkable healing properties and Helotropium indicum stands out as a prime example. Known as Indian Helotrope, this plant has been utilized across various cultures for generations to address skin problems, liver disorders and a wide range of other common ailments. Now, with the advent of modern scientific research, the medicinal benefits of Helotropium indicum are increasingly being validated, bridging the gap between ancient wisdom and contemporary healthcare. So, in today's video, we're pretty much going to be exploring some of its uses in traditional medicine. We're also going to be looking at some of its pharmacological activities and some precautions. So, without further delay, let's dive straight into the video. Helotropium indicum is the Latin name for a plant that is commonly referred to as turnsoles here in Jamaica. In other parts of the world, its preferred common name is Indian Helotrope in English, but it's also known as Indian turnsole and scorpion weed among other common names, both in English and in other languages. It belongs to the Boranginia CE plant family. It's a common weed that is native to Asia and is widely distributed in tropical and subtropical regions, such as here in Jamaica, other parts of the Americas, Africa, and the Pacific Islands. Now, in terms of its characteristics, it can grow up to about one meter in height. It has leaves that are broad and lance-shaped, and they are alternately arranged on its stems. Its flowers are small and tubular, and they are arranged in coiled clusters. The colors can either be white or pale lavender. In Jamaica, you will find this plant growing wildly and organically along roadsides, in people's yards, and in other green spaces. The plant has numerous pharmacological activities, which was shown after several studies were done on it, and some of these studies validate some of its use in folklore medicine. It has been reported to have anti-inflammatory properties, also hypotensive, wound healing, anti-big C, anti-cataract activities, anti-glaucoma, gastroprotective, antibacterial, antimicrobial, and liver protective properties. The parts of the plant that are used to make medicine are the leaves, stems, roots, and whole plant. Here in Jamaica, women use the flowers to make an infusion and they use it orally to treat heavy menstrual bleeding. They also use the whole plant to make a decoction, which they take orally to treat a fever, ulcers, venereal diseases, and a sore throat. To treat rectal sores, people make a decoction with the whole plant and apply it into their rectum. They also make a paste of the fresh plant and apply it topically to treat wounds and ulcers. In Ghana, it has been said that people use it to treat hypertension, that in Togo, people make a decoction of the whole plant and use it to treat liver diseases, that in Senegal, they use the leaf powder topically to treat eczema, dermatitis, and in Petigo, that in Taiwan, they make a paste of the roots and leaves and use it topically to treat hepatitis, that in the West Indies, people use the fresh whole plant to make a paste, which they use topically to treat head lice. That in Bangladesh, people take the leaves and either make a juice or a decoction, and they use this either orally or topically, or in some cases, both orally and topically, to treat chicken pox, allergies. They use it as a blood purifier for swollen knees, joint pain, as a poison antidote, and for severe itchy legs. It has also been said that in different parts of India, people use the leaves mostly to make a paste or to make a drink, which they use for wounds, 
skin infections, and eye inflammation, and also as a snake bite and scorpion sting antidote. That in Nicaragua, they use the plants, roots, and leaves to make a decoction, which is taken orally to treat whooping cough. The leaf paste is also applied topically to treat skin infections. That in Senegal and the Philippines, people there use the whole plant to make a decoction, which they take to treat kidney stones. In Senegal, people also take this to promote urination. In the Philippines, it has been said that people also make a decoction with the roots and use it to promote menstrual flow, and they use the seeds to promote the healing of wounds and to treat cholera and malaria. That in African countries, people use the plant to treat malaria, dermatitis, abdominal pain, renal failure, and urinary infections. That in Thailand, people mix the plant's inflorescence with milk or water and use it to make women sterile. That in Malaysia, they use the whole plant to treat putrefaction and ringworm. And that in Burma, people there use the whole plant to make a decoction, which they use to treat gonorrhea. Before using this plant, it is advisable for you to consult with your medical doctor. This plant is not recommended for pregnant women. It is considered safe in small doses, but if it is consumed regularly or in large quantities, it has been shown to have a cumulative toxic effect upon the liver. That's it for now, my beautiful people. I hope you found the information valuable. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.